Hey, everybody. Welcome to Thursday Thoughts, part of our weekly rhythms. Uh, if we've never met before, my name's Derek, and this is my good friend, Gil. Gil, how you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. How are you? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing mm -hmm. good. I'm, I'm so glad for, for you to be here, man, and be part of this conversation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've been talking a lot uh, about all sorts of different themes and things that are that are bubbling to the surface as we as a church and then even larger as a country navigate these waters of racial reconciliation and Gil, you know, while I've been learning so much, man, from you and so many others um, in our community that are black, um, it's just been such a helpful uh, season to enter into these kind of conversations, man. So I'm so grateful for your voice. And, you know, as we've been talking a lot about different things, uh, you and I have kind of uh, been processing a few things the same way, specifically mm -hmm. uh, this really challenging thing about what it means to maintain friendships in this season. Right, right. As, as things have been so polarizing and I think even the own threat to our own identity that happens when mm -hmm. we find out that somebody we love, somebody that we're in a relationship, maybe even a family member, isn't at the same place that you are personally um, in this journey along racial reconciliation. And really this, this goes beyond just this topic, right? This is something that is bigger than that. But Pastor Jess t gave an amazing message this past week on mm -hmm. unity and what it means for us as Christ followers, as believers to be, to be unified and, and not, not uniform, right? Not, not necessarily seeing or even uh, processing things the same way, but to be united, a united front and to be connected and deeply committed to each other. And that's, that's proven to be a real challenge in this season. Mm. And, and I, I've said it before, I think I told you this, but for me personally, um, I feel like um, I need to wear a different uniform in this season. And, you know, I'm either wearing my fire department uniform, and even though I don't wear a clergy collar, I just pretend I had one, I feel like I'd have to take both of those things off right now and put on a referee jersey. Mm. And I feel like my main job over the last month has been refereeing friendships mm. and helping people process what it means to be committed to someone who maybe sees things differently than you or even, even relate, like connected to someone. Right. right. Who see things different than you. So I just want to ask you, man, like, how have you personally been processing what to do with friends who don't align with your views on racial injustice? And we'll take it to the extreme example, maybe even a friend or a family member um, who believes racism just simply isn't a problem in our country. Why all the fuss? Like somebody maybe even with that perspective um, mm -hmm. or the far other pendulum, uh, somebody who, um, is maybe advocating for, for different things that maybe you don't think are helpful um, in, in regards to this fight. Like, what has that been like for you personally? Right. So um, I'm getting feedback for some reason, but all right. Well, uh, can you hear me pretty well? Yeah, I can hear you good. Okay. So um, one rumor uh, or, or one, one misconception I would say that uh, some people have is, is one is that, black people feel the same about this issue. Mm -hmm. We are just like any other race. We're, especially on black issues, we're across the board. Like you look at someone like uh, Candace Owens, who is, is uh, uh, Dave Chappelle just went off on her on, on his special. Uh, there's, uh, I just recently watched, there was a forum on, and it happened a while ago before all this hit, but it was an AT&T sponsored forum and they took Maybe there was like eight black um, uh, leaders in our community, everything from, from rappers to politicians and everything. And the first question that the moderator, all black panel, first question that the moderator asked was, what do you think is the most important uh, issue uh, in dealing with African-American culture? And every single one of them had a different answer, mm -hmm. you know, and they were just as equally um, impassioned by it. Yeah. So how I'm dealing with it, and it, it just solidified kind of my thinking on this subject, how I'm dealing with it is um, really it's about, can I have a, uh, a dialogue with this person intelligently without uh, a lot of emotion getting involved, even like things that cause a lot of emotion in us? Mm -hmm. uh, can, 
can we speak uh, on the level of human about things that we disagree with? Mm -hmm. If the answer is yes, then I could still have that person in my life because they may give me a perspective that I didn't even uh, consider and mm -hmm. think about. Or they may give me a perspective that solidifies my opinion, but now I can see differently how this person is coming at it and I can understand them a little bit more, mm -hmm. you know? But it, it, it has to start with that dialogue. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have that dialogue, you're gonna only, uh, you know, there's algorithms that show you the things that you wanna show, that you wanna see, you know, that will prove your point over and over again. I particularly make it a point to, to I'm not conservative, but I listen to, uh, I go on YouTube and, and find conservative thought, uh, black conservative thought, um, white, uh, and, and just so, I challenge myself to make sure that my convictions are, are true and that I feel this way, you know? Um, and I think it's, it's just the healthiest way to, to go about understanding what topics, what the topics are. So as far as like canceling somebody or telling them that I can't have you in my life because they disagree wholeheartedly, um, it's a personal decision. It's definitely a personal decision. I would just say be careful about that uh, because you may be uh, one conversation away from giving them a perspective that can change their mind, mm -hmm. that, can, that can give them insight. Um, mm -hmm. There's so many uh, examples online or wherever you want of people who thought one way and, and they've changed their life around. I, I'm in prison, well, before COVID hit, I was in prison every week. And, and those guys are, again, some of the, 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 the kindest, nicest dudes that you can ever meet that uh, so a lot of them made mistakes in their life. And now they don't want to be that person anymore. Yeah. But uh, if I was to say as a teacher, you know, oh, you did this thing that was so despicable, even more so, not only did a lot of prisoners, not only did they do it in thought, but they did it in action. And that's why they're here. Mm -hmm. But if I gave up on them, then there would never be any redemption uh, within the prison. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. A lot of the people that people are trying to cancel right now, they're only guilty of the thought mm -hmm. and people want to just cancel them mm -hmm. of something that they don't believe in. Uh, and that could be detrimental to us moving together in, in uh, humanity and in society. Yeah, man, that's so helpful. I love that you call it out, dude, that like, one, you're Gil, right? You don't speak for mm -hmm. all black people. Right. Um, and that's always helpful to remember, right? Because we mm -hmm. can hear, especially as a white person who's trying to learn right now, mm -hmm. is it's so tempting for us to hear an opinion from a black person that we agree with mm -hmm. and hold on to it. And so what I've been challenging myself to do is to listen to black people I disagree with, mm -hmm. right? And, and even white people, people that are at different places in the conversation. And it's a hard thing to do. And I love how you said, like, that's just a personal choice that everybody's going to have to make. How much are you going to allow this kind of dialogue into your life? You know, and mm -hmm. I think you said something really important. If both people are showing up to it, to have a dialogue, to listen, to learn from each other, it's certainly easier. And I think that the waters that we're navigating are sometimes the, the, the friends that we have don't necessarily show up all that civil. And mm -hmm. um, I guess for you, like, have you had any of those? Because what you said something that really stuck out to me, that, that you might be the only hope or the only chance that somebody who's not as far along in this journey as you are might come further along because right. they trust you because they have a relationship built with you. And it's not that you have that relationship like in a utilitarian way, like you mm -hmm. just say someone's friend to change their mind. But the reality is, is like if you're canceling somebody because they're not where you're at, they may, they may never, if the, if the gap is, you know, you think they should be where you are mm -hmm. and they're not coming further along, and then you walk out of their life, you're just reinforcing that that's a place they don't ever want to go. Right. You know, um, and that's a challenging thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, in your opinion, like, do you think, like, collectively in an ideal world, like, is it more beneficial to stay friends with people who, who are counter to, to where we might be on the journey? Or is it, is it better to maybe say goodbye to those friendships. I know this is a generalization, but just right, in general. Right, right. Um, 
You know what I really feel, and this is a, a scary thing to do, but if you really believe in what you believe in, uh, I think it's uh, essential. If you choose to stay friends, which I, I think that you should stay associates or whatever word you want to use for that to make you feel okay with the relationship, mm -hmm. um, you have to be bold and let them know uh, this is how I feel. Mm -hmm. You know, like, uh, I don't agree with you on this completely. Um, I'd love to have a conversation so we can kind of talk it out uh, mm -hmm. uh, and help our relationship grow so we can see maybe we have to agree to disagree or, or, or whatever. But you know, a lot of times what I see happening is either people will put a blanket statement, like, if you believe this or you're not down with this, then don't just delete me off of Facebook, you know, and, and that, that cuts off all communication, all uh, thing, right? So now you're, you're, losing, you're losing people that could eventually potentially be allies because you've cut off all communication, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and this and this this issue is messy. I was watching Trevor Noah uh, this morning, and and he was talking about too. Like this issue is so messy. It's not as black and white as as we want to uh, think because we on either side have been subjugated to a lot of conditioning, mm. you know. And and it, depending on your level, your your the the input that you're getting in, it's going to take people different amounts of time to get there. Mm. Um, but going back to my point is that you have to, um, you know, let your pr people know where you stand and say, you know, I still love you. Like we've known each other X amount of years. Um, if you want to have a conversation about it, cool. Or maybe we have the type of relationship where we just don't talk about this aspect of it. I mean, it, I mean, it happens all the time in families, right? Uh, you marry someone that, that your family doesn't approve of one way or the other. You know, you have to decide whether or not you want that, that family member uh, in your life. Mm. I, I say if they're, if they're causing you a lot of pain, uh, not just the fact that they disagree, but if they are act actively like saying stuff and, and, mm. and like, uh, like whenever you're around them, make you feel less than. Mm. And you may have to distance yourself for your own like mental health and your heart health, yeah. you know, but then again, be calm, be bold and tell them exactly why. Mm. And maybe they're like, I didn't know this affected you that much. Let me reexamine this. You know, that, that is a definitely a possibility. Wow. Like, cause some people may say like, you know what? I don't want to lose a brother over this. I don't want to lose a cousin. I don't want to lose a friend uh, over this. Like, uh, let's talk. Mm. I mean, that's idealistic, but it's not out of the realm of possibility, yeah. you know, because it's 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 happened. There's evidence of it. Yeah, that's that's so helpful, man. Like, uh, you know, what I hear you saying is like establishing boundaries. One, be honest. I think, right. I think that's that's the hard thing to do. Right. How can we mm -hmm. be honest with with people? And I think sometimes we think that that we're clear enough by what we're posting or what we're saying mm -hmm. or whatever. And we think that like that thing we reposted or that thing we said might speak to the whole complexity of the way we're seeing this thing, mm -hmm. but it simply doesn't, you know? And so I just think like, like you recommend, just let someone know, like this way we're engaging right now hurts me mm -hmm. and I want to stay your friend, but we're just going to have to agree to not talk about this for a season. And so mm -hmm. you develop some boundaries, right? Um, and I think it's, I think it's important to say for this season, cause it's something that you can't just ignore forever. Right. It's like, while it's hot, while it's sizzling, like as we're processing, like, Hey, I'm going to stay friends with you. We're going to say, I'm going to, I love you, but we just need to not talk about this for a while. Cause I, I don't know if I can internally mm. navigate this right now, you know? Yeah. And also what we also have to realize is when people post uh, a lot of times, that's at the end of their rope. So they're not like thinking in this, like um, we have to, they're, they're, they're frustrated about something. They've seen something online or whatever. They've had a conversation and they're just, da, 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 and they put it out there. Yeah. And, and, you know, sometimes you have to give, also give space for people to be upset, mm -hmm. you know, meaning that they're going to like verbally put out, whatever they're going to put out. Mm. Uh, and, and if this is your friend, whatever, um, reach out to them and like, Hey, and not, not on a, on a public forum, 
you know, and this is more of a combative thing, like actually call them or, or text them personally, like, hey, I saw you post this, you know, um, uh, I'd love to talk to you about it. I don't, I don't really disagree. I don't really agree with what you're, you're talking about. And if you have a moment, I, I'd love to. And then so you can see their perspective, they can see yours. And then again, you can decide whether or not um, that, that uh, how, how much of a relationship that you, you want to have, but just to cancel someone straight out, um, you know, you're not, you may not be seeing a full picture. I love that you're bringing that up. And you know, you as a, as a communicator, and you, you're a gifted communicator in all kinds of different ways. I, I feel like this is a given and we should all know this, but in the digital age we live in, I think we forget, like, tell us what we're missing when all we're doing is DMing each other or even passively aggressively reposting stuff against what one of your friends might think. What's missing in that exchange when it comes to communication? If we just limit ourselves to DMs and texts, like what are, what, what are we leaving on the table? when it comes to the art of communication? Um, well, the, in the art of communication, uh, inflection is everything. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Um, so uh, there was uh, just a quick example. The NBA is coming back. Uh, and, and one of the players said, uh, basically, because a, a lot of the African-American players are kind of feeling some kind of way like they may not want to play in this time, not because of COVID, because it's just the this this world is kind of burning around them, and they don't they don't want to play any right now. You know what I'm saying? And one of the the players tweeted, "Hey, if LeBron's playing, we're playing." Mm -hmm. And some sports correspondents took it like he's being sarcastic. Oh well, if LeBron says we're gonna play, I guess we're gonna play. Meaning like he. Uh, uh, he's like the, the, the face of the league and, and we have to do what he says in a sarcastic way. And then other people thought it said it like, yo, yo, this, this guy has been vocal about black matters for a long time. Mm -hmm. He's okay with it, you know, and, and we should, so there's inflection is everything and you can't get that on a DM. You can't get that on a, you have to re-explain yourself a bunch of different times just to get that. I, I suffer from that all the time. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what you're, what you're getting at. You're, you're miss you're missing facial expressions to let you know what's going on you're missing um just the energy mm. there's the like everybody has been to a concert uh, uh been listened to someone speak whatever and it felt the energy you could tell when someone's being inauthentic you can tell when someone's being passionate and really believe in what they're they're saying all these things make up our communication they even say what how much of of communication is body language mm -hmm. you know all these things we're missing when 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 we just take a, a piece of text mm -hmm. uh and 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 try to interpret it i mean we've been trying to interpret the bible for <laughs> for forever and we still have debates about it on people who are the same denomination in yeah. the same church Come and we on. still have debates on what that means yeah. uh you know so yeah. uh, we can't just take texts all the time for face value that's so good man i love that you i love that you take us there man i cannot agree more just even even asking the one i think you know the, the spirit of curiosity takes you so far Mm -hmm. Right. And so even in my own in interactions and exchanges with people, I, you know, I think they say one thing or they repost one thing. And if you reposted this one thing, you must be agreeing with everything that that person right. or that entity or that thing. Mm -hmm. So I want to end with that question around just association. Mm -hmm. but before we get to that, I love that you, you took us to the scriptures mm -hmm. and, you know, that we could talk for days about, you know, a lot of, a lot of Christians or even the evangelical answer has been like, it's just a sin issue. It's just about Jesus, like Jesus, 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 which man, you and me both completely agree with it. Jesus has to be at the center of any of this kind of change. Right. Jesus even says, you know, that he's given us the ministry of reconciliation, right? Mm -hmm. In fact, the scriptures already say that we've already been reconciled to God, right? So, so we, we can go to the scriptures, we can go to the text, but like you said, e even when we, even if we just use the Bible, to, to, to form our own opinions, interpretation is what divides us. We interpret it this way, we interpret it that way. Um, and I think that's why it's really important, especially in a Christian community, to, 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 to fight hard for clarity on what are the things we agree upon. 
mm-hmm. you know, and if we can agree on that, if we can agree that, that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus loves us beyond our understanding or misunderstanding, uh, that Jesus wants us to be committed to each other and to be mm-hmm. partners in this work of reconciliation, um, then we can enter into a dialogue with, I think, open hearts that can help us see each other. And I think that's probably mm-hmm. one of the most important parts of a dialogue is right. to be able to see each other. And I think we're just missing so much of that in digital age. The COVID's not helping, you know, when you can't right. circle up and be in person together. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think what what that's doing is it's even, um, it's it's exacerbating this issue to the degree that we get to this association stuff. Mm-hmm. And I think, um, I think a lot of the reason why, like, uh, it took white people for a long time to come along to this Black Lives Matters sentiment and, and belief and statement is for a long time, for a lot of white people, all Black Lives Matter was, was an organization that supported things they didn't necessarily believe in. Right. And it was as if they had co-opted a statement that's true. Mm-hmm. Black Lives Matter, period. Yeah. yeah. Of course they matter. And so... I think we, you know, whether or not you agree with the organization, um, I, I've seen a rising tide around this issue where a lot of, of, of white folks are coming around and going, man, we, we agree with the statement wholeheartedly that black lives right. matter. Yet we still find ourselves completely fractured on these association things. So it could be me and Gil are tight and we're kind of in the same spot and, and we're learning in the same, at the same, you know, our heart we have a kindred spirit here but right Bill's friends with somebody else that i totally disagree with mm-hmm. so what happens is oh there's a threat now between mine and gill's friendship because mm-hmm. of his friendship yeah I, I see that triangulation happening a lot right now yeah. And yeah friends are friends are breaking friendships not even over what the two share or don't share but over what they share with somebody else Mm-hmm. or what organization they support or what cause or what what next step they believe is, is important you know certainly pol- the police reform a lot of those that's been a big wedge for a lot of people mm-hmm. to what degree that people agree or disagree on um and all of that so i mean just speak to that as we and, out. yeah and sometimes it's just understanding so uh you're talking about police reform so a big statement is defund the police right now right and and a lot and when I first heard that, then there was a, like a small alarm inside of me, like wait a second, we we do need the police, like it's not. It, but but then uh, it took me doing the research, and this is like kind of having a conversation with the issue. It took me doing the research and listening to people to understand what they they meant about that. And it's basically um, uh, just to look at the budget of, of the police and they, uh, you know, see where they're spending in a, in, in a uh, enormous amount on extra stuff that maybe a community, like a, a, a group or a panel or, or someone, uh, an oversight committee could see like, okay, they've been spending, you know, all this stuff on tanks. And when, when we have, messed up community centers maybe we should more deal with some of the things that can prevent crime and poverty and and feel in food deserts and feelings of isolation versus just dealing with the the rotten fruit that has fallen on the trees Mm. um you know uh, organizations sometimes they get especially things like police force because politicians come in and they say we want to be tough on crime so they get carte blanche to to write out checks for things and and so what the defund police, as I understand it, I'm saying this as I understand it is, let's just take a look at what is going. And this is city to city, county to county. Let's take a look at what is going on with with their budget, what their actual budget is. And companies and organizations do this all the time. Corporations do this all the time. Let's look at what we're spending on on R and D, and and maybe we should put this money more towards it. Be better on advertising. Maybe it's you know it's it's that kind of thing, but the wording has caused people alarm. Mm -hmm. So uh, my point is, is that sometimes we get really in a, in an emotional state when we don't understand the whole issue. And it goes back to having dialogue, listening to other people who you don't necessarily agree with. So you get a full scope of, of what is going on. And if you cancel people, Mm -hmm. then you're never going to get that, that full scope. And then uh, you will be, 
in my opinion, you will be uh, in the same state that you're accusing other people in living and speaking and emoting through ignorance because you don't know what the whole yeah. uh, of the issue is. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that's I think that's so so helpful. Cl- 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 I want to close with this. Um, I-, I think one of the one of the problems, like what you just said, right, is like one statement elicits this emotion and you throw it off, you write it off. And it, but, but it's because we don't know and we need to know, we need to learn. And I think, I think a lot of the reasons why people don't take the time to learn or to know is because they're exhausted. Yeah. You feel like I, I'm, this is, I'm drinking from a fire hose. This is information overload. Mm. I don't have time to educate myself on all those issues or this issue or that issue. And so I would rather just take a, 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 a statement and make my own interpretation of it and decide whether I agree or disagree. And, you know, that word has been used a lot. And I've been hearing that a lot from white folks who are learning a lot right now. Mm-hmm. And we're tired, you know. Mm-hmm. But the beginning That's of this conversation of us learning was black folks saying, we've been exhausted for 400 years fighting this fight. Mm-hmm. And so as someone who probably knows exhaustion better than we ever could, like, what would you say about that? Just the, the idea that because we're tired, we don't want to know, or we don't want to learn. Like, how would you challenge us towards health in that arena? So there's a lot of issues that are going on in this world simultaneously, um, like that uh, demand our attention and, 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 uh, us to to gather information on just something as as simple but profound as the environment right now what's going on like that is we're in a state of emergency with that now i don't know hardly anything to do with what's going on with that was what um just the insight is to ted that was our next subject had this not gone on there was going to be this global um uh, cl- a thing about climate change and all the TEDx's around the world was going to talk about climate change because that was such a big issue. Mm-hmm. I don't know a, 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 a lot about that. This is where spirit comes in, mm-hmm. in my opinion, is that God is going to place something on your heart that's going to challenge you. Mm-hmm. That's the thing that you need to really pursue. Um, and, and people are going to come along and challenge you. That's the thing that, that you need to pursue and get more education before you speak. And if someone asks you about it and you don't know the information, you know what, this is what I think, but I don't know the full picture and be again, just be as honest as possible. Mm. I don't know the full picture this, from my perspective. This is what it is, but I, I'm happy to, to talk about it if, if you want to right now, but like to expect people to, um, to expect people to just, uh, you know, grab every single book they can and dedicate their lives to now knowing about this, this, this issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's a tough thing to ask of people, you know, cause we still have kids, we still have bills, we still have all the things that are going on in our day. But um, I know that you're going to get challenged on something that's going to spark something that spirit's going to tell you like, Hey, I, I really need to, to know about this and understand how I feel about this. Mm. And, and that's the thing that you pursue and be unapologetic. Like, listen, I just haven't had a chance to, to, to really delve into this topic right now, uh, yeah. you know, and that's okay to me. That's okay. You, you said that in a staff meeting a couple of weeks ago, you're like, man, this fight now might not be your fight. Yeah. But you know, it's hard right now because it's, it's so on the forefront of everybody's mind. And it is right. a fight that collectively we need to fight. Definitely. Definitely. But, but like you said, like it might not be your fight, but, but mm. I, I love what you challenge us to is like, if this ain't it, what is? Because mm. you've got to be fighting for something. And are you listening to the voice of God in your life? Are you right. asking God for that kind of clarity? Are you saying, God, mm. you know, let me, let me see things the way you see things. Let me give me the heart that you have for this. God, speak clearly to me on what my fight is. And if we know what our fight is and the thing that the cause that we're going to take up, then we, I think the best thing we can do then is leave it to the folks whose fight it is. Right. Experts in it instead of when, in, when we're uneducated on something. Exactly. And, and so exactly. I think about this, like I, I work as a firefighter and we have a union 
and I think whatever you want about, you know, labor forces and unions and everyone right. has their own degree on that. But like our union board is deeply, deeply committed to better wages, better benefits. They're, they're all up in that fight. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm happy to just show up to work and do my job. And right. you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to ever volunteer to be on the union board, but mm-hmm. I'm going to fully support the guys who were there fighting that fight. Right. Because you know? also is because, okay, just to take your example, if, if you started, if, if you're uninterested previously in this and, and even now, and you started saying like going in a different direction and you're telling, now you tell the, the, the board to, Hey, let's start talking about and thinking about, um, and, and, and everybody needs to read these books on the environment or black lives matter. That's not, that's not what they're there for, you know, at the moment. And, and I'm saying this as a black man and and I know that sounds, sounds crazy. All I ask, all I ask is a, Leave it to the, the people who are going to fight. If you're not going to be in this fight, leave it to the people who are going to fight. Don't get in our way actively and, and lead with love, yeah. you know, you know, and, and so just that's a basic human thing. You know what I'm saying? If you're not in that fight, like just loving people, then I don't know why you're on this earth. Come on. Awesome. You know, man, that's a, that's a truth bomb there. We'll leave it with that, man. Yeah. Um, well, Gil, I so appreciate your perspective, man, and your opinion and just your commitment to, um, to, to helping us as a church see things mm-hmm. from a different perspective. Um, mm-hmm. And, and, and the, just the work that you're doing in our community, man, is so inspiring. Uh, you're helping so many people. And um, I know your opinion is just your opinion, but I value it mm-hmm. deeply. So yeah, no thank you so much, man, for sharing with us. And uh, we're going to hear a lot more from you. I mean, yeah, you, you keep, continue to... to, to to lead really important movements inside of Maker's Church with platform yeah. and made to make and giving other people voices. Um, and so we're just so thankful for yours, man. So yeah, no problem. Love you, brother. I'll talk to you love soon. You too. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.